Okay, so today we're talking about problem solving using equations. Problem solving is a very big uh, topic of maths. It can't be specified really when we talk about a specific topic. Problem solving comes up everywhere. So specifically, what we are talking about here is taking a problem, a worded problem, rewriting it using algebra, forming an equation and solving that. So let me just get into it straight away. Uh, they say something like this. The sum of three consecutive even integers is 132. Find the smallest integer. So let's do it this way. Three consecutive even integers. Um, so how do we write that down? And I, I don't like uh, the method the textbook does it, so I would like to do it slightly different. Um, consecutive even integers. Yesterday we saw that even integers or an even number is actually equal to 2x and that is because any even number can be written as 2 times something so this x could be anything 1 2 3 5 a million um, now they said three consecutive even integers so here this is the bit we need to think about so if the smallest one of them is 2x what would be the next one so we saw this 3x not quite. What do you need to add to get from one even number to the next one? Plus two. Plus two. Right? So 2x plus two would be the next I, one. I, I didn't see the even one. Exactly. So then what, how would you get to the next one after this? You would add two again. So if you add two to this, what do you get? Sorry. I wrote plus four, gosh, it's 2x plus two is what we get, apologies, 2x plus two, because this 2x was the original number, if we add two to it, we get 2x plus two, and then if we add two again, what would the next result be? Well, it would be 2x plus four. Ooh. Now, remember, we wrote this down yesterday. Even numbers are 2x, 2x plus 2, 2x plus 4, etc. And we wrote the corresponding result for odd numbers. So please refer back to your notes uh, from yesterday's lesson, the 19th of April, uh, to memorize this because I've written it down and I said, please remember this. It's never going to given, uh, never going to be given to you. Now, what they're saying is the sum of these. Now, remember, sum, we translated this yesterday. Sum means plus. So they're saying if we add these up, the result is 132 so what that means is it's equal to 132 so we are practically translating this into maths so now let's go ahead and write this down they said 2x plus 2x plus 2 plus 2x plus 4 is equal to 132 so that would be the idea and they said find the smallest integer so find the smallest one of these ones so what is the smallest one out of these three guys? 2x, 2x plus 2x. 2x, exactly. So what the rush can find is 2x. So let's go ahead and do that. So here, what do we get if we add up all the things on the left? 2x plus 2x plus 2x gives us 6x. And 2 plus 4 gives us 6. So get 6x plus 6 is 132. So how do we proceed here? Let's go ahead and solve this equation. If we do minus six. Yes, we take away the six and then we get 126. 126. 126. 126. Excellent. And then we divide that by six to find X. what x is equal to. So if you divide both sides by six, you get x is equal to 21. So that would be our x x is equal to 21. 42 is the smallest. Exactly. So 2x is 42. So that would be the smallest even integer out of these ones. Now the textbook has used a slightly different approach. Instead of using 2x, it's used x. Um, that's an equivalent method, but I want you to get used to the idea that an any even number is 2x and always use this notation to avoid confusing uh with to avoid confusion in the future because we'll have a lot of problems with even and not numbers in the future okay the result will be the same x is equal to 42 uh they've used x instead of 2x there 
Now, I would basically uh, urge you to avoid using this X notation because I think it would be better to use 2X. Moving on to another problem, another worded problem here. So example 14, if twice a number is subtracted from 11, the result is four more than the number, what is the number? So twice a number is subtracted from 11. Now, twice a number. So if this number is X, how would you write twice this number? 2X. 2x exactly so twice this number is 2x and then it says subtracted so subtracted is translated to minus and then the result is four more than the number so four more than the number let's think about this well what was the number guys it was x we don't know the number so it's x four more than that number then is x plus four and when they said the result is, they meant this result is, they meant this is equal to. That's how we translate this bit. So let's go ahead and write this down. They're saying if 2x is subtracted from 11. Now this is the annoying thing about English. We say this is subtracted from that. So we mean that minus this. It's very annoying, it's backwards and it's confusing. But they're saying basically 2x is subtracted from 11, which means 11 minus this number. So we have 11 minus 2x. And if you like, I can use uh, the colors I've used before. So it's 11 minus 2x. And that's equal to the result is 4 more than x. So it's x plus 4. So this is the problem now. And what do we need to find? We need to find x. What is the number x? So let's go ahead and solve this. We have seen various methods here to solve this problem. I would probably add 2x here to get all the x's to the right. Uh, you can do it another way. You can do minus x, you can do multiple methods, but actually you will get, end up with the same result. Uh, so if we add 2x on both sides, what happens here on the left is the 2x and the minus 2x will cancel. So you're left with just 11 is equal to. And then on the right, you'll have x plus 2x giving you 3x and then the plus four will just copy. Then we can do minus four on both sides. So what will that give us? It will give us seven on the left and just three X on the right. Let me just double check here to make sure the numbers are correct. Yeah, it looks like they are correct. So we'll divide both sides by the three to get rid of it. So if you divide both sides by three, you get X is equal to seven over three. And it's best to leave it as a fraction because when you have a, a fraction like this, it would be a recurring decimal. Um, so it would be always better to write it down this way rather than a recurring decimal. Let's just double check that indeed that was the right answer. So yes, seven over three or two and one third. Um, generally speaking, we are happy with top heavy fractions with improper fractions as we call them rather than mixed numbers. So please do not change these numbers into mixed numbers. We don't tend to use them that much. Okay, and moving on now to another example here. Cans of sardines come in two sizes. Small cans cost two pounds each. Large cans cost three pounds each, or dollars actually in this case. If 15 cans of sardines are bought for a total of $38, how many small cans were purchased? So the textbook has used the table method here. I would probably just show you how I would go about uh, doing this. So here, small cans, I don't really know how many we've got, so I would say small cans are X, X number of cans. Large cans would be, let's say, Y. You could use different letters, obviously, if you wanted to. Um, so now let's see what we've got. So small cans cost two pound each. So how much have I spent on small cans? Well, I have spent $2 times the number of cans. So that would be two X. And what would be the cost of large cans, well, that would be $3 times the number of cans, so that would be 3Y. So now, they're saying that we bought 15 cans of sardines for a total of $38. The question is, how many of the uh, cans were purchased? So what have we got here exactly? We know that the total cost here, uh, 
or the total count, sorry, the X and the Y all together, there's 15 of them. So they've, so let me just go here on the left, actually, where I, I'm reading that. So 15 cans of sardines are bought. So that means that that would be small plus large is equal to 15 all together. So effectively, X is the number of small ones, Y is the number of large ones. So if we add them all up, we get 15. Now we can use this to find one of the two, so either large or y, sorry, either large, which is y, or small, which is x, in terms of the other one. So we can choose here that the, you, you have a choice, but basically the choice uh, that the textbook has gone with here, I'm gonna follow this, is y is equal to 15 minus x. So it's taken away x from both sides. It's like saying, we bought 15 cans in total, so what could we have bought? For example, seven and eight so one of them is going to be uh seven and the other one's going to be 15 minus seven which is eight so that's pretty much what we are saying here that one of the two quantities is 15 minus the other one since the total is 15. but now what does that mean it means we can talk about the cost we were looking at previously so what do we know we know that the cost it was 2x plus 3y so this is how much the small cans cost plus how much the large cans cost, and the total is equal to $38. So this whole thing is equal to $38. But you see, this is an equation with two unknowns, so we can't really solve it unless we only have one unknown. And in this case, we can just take this y from previously and replace this in here. So we can go ahead and replace y with 15 minus x, because y is just the total number of cans minus the small number of cans. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. So that will be 2x plus 3 times this 15 minus x. And all of this is equal to 38. And now we can solve this equation. Now, this equation is solved right here on the right. So I'm not going to do it because the textbook has already done it. But this is how we ended up with this equation. So we have 2x plus 3 times the brackets is equal to 38. If we expand the brackets by using the claw method, as I like to call it, uh, we've got 3 times 15 is 45, 3 times minus x is minus 3x, and then we'll just collect like terms. So 2x minus 3x is minus x. So we've got 45 minus x is equal to 38. Right, if we now take away 45 from both sides to get rid of this 45, then we're just left with minus x on the left, and on the right, we'll have 38 minus 45, which is minus 7, which means, well, if minus x is minus 7, then x is 7. So you can think about this logically, if you like. The opposite of both sides will be uh, equal. Or if you like, you multiply both sides by minus 1. So that becomes positive, and this becomes positive as well, giving you x is equal to 7. So what was x? x was the number of small cans. So x is 7 means 7 small cans were bought. Um, so that means if we were to do 15 minus 7, we would get 8. 8 would be the number of large cans, but they didn't ask for this in this question. So we'll just leave it as this. Um, now, this is a relatively tricky question. So if you did get a bit confused by this, that is to be expected. We certainly need more practice to make sure uh, we, we become more confident with this. But basically, that is pretty much it with the examples for today. You can see it's a follow-up from yesterday's work. Basically, it's all about... Firstly, translating the problem using algebra, and then today we're actually solving the problem, whereas yesterday we were just translating it, we were doing the first bit. Now I'll stop recording here and I'll give some time to ask me questions.